In this video, I want to go through a quick CFA level one exam style question on depreciation and more specifically on a unique method of depreciation called units of production. It may not be the most popular method when it comes to its application in real life. However, it has certain very unique features and potential benefits which may be examined in the CFA level one exam. So if this is something you want to get right, please keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question that I want us to have a go at. It's a company um, scenario which I already displayed on a previous question relating to straight line depreciation. If you watched that one, fine. If you didn't, you'll still be able to go through this one. Don't worry. So let's have a look. A company has just completed the acquisition of a machine with the following financial characteristics. Purchase price, estimated residual value, expected useful life, and total production capacity. And this time around, um, as opposed to the previous questions, or in contrast to the other question based on the same scenario, we are going to utilize the information on production capacity, those 100,000 units. If the company uses the units of production method to account for the machine's depreciation and production volumes were 15,000 units in year one, and 23,000 units in year two, accumulated depreciation after the second year of the assets operation is closest to, and three options follow. Okay, well, the units of production method uh, of depreciation is relatively simple. What we'll do is we'll take the original cost of the asset, which is 800,000, so that's the original cost, We'll take into account the estimated residual value, so how much we think this asset will be worth at the end of its useful life. And that's just 50,000. So this is a residual value, although it's estimated, estimated, and therefore it's something which can potentially change during the life of the asset. It may be, that estimate may be adjusted. And now the whole idea behind depreciation is to go from cost to residual value in terms of depreciating the asset, making its carrying amount lower and lower and lower. But this time it will not be a function of time. So, you know, unlike normally you'd have this done over time, it's going to be done over a completely different unit and that's going to be units produced. So instead of depreciating over a five-year period, we're going to depreciate over 100,000 units of production. And therefore, depending on how many units were indeed produced in a specific period, which may not be a nice and steady flow, we're going to have different amounts of depreciation being charged to potentially to PL in every year. That's the whole idea behind units of production method. So no longer this linear function, but maybe, you know, something which is either quicker or slower, or maybe even halts if there is no production at all. Let's have a look. We need to calculate the depreciation which will be charged per unit, per unit produced. And by the way, this method is typically applied or often going to be applied in those industries where there's going to be potentially a big swing or big volatility in terms of how many units we produce from period to period. And therefore, in order to make depreciation reflective of um, you know, the, the, the production volumes, we're going to apply this method rather than straight line depreciation, which is based on the concept of time. Okay, 800,000, that was our initial cost, minus residual value, 50,000, that is the depreciable amount. And let's divide it by the 100,000 units. Okay, so here in the top we've got 750,000, we divide by 100,000, nice and easy. This gives us, this is in euros, 7.5 euro of depreciation per each unit produced. So what's going to be, and this was the question, wasn't it, what's going to be the accumulated depreciation following two years of um, operations after two years? Well, 
we need to take the volumes really produced, 15,000 units in uh, year one, 23,000 units in uh, year two over here. So 15,000 plus 23,000. Um, that's going to be how many? That's going to be 38,000 units overall. And we're going to need to multiply that by seven and a half per unit. And you can absolutely easily do this on your calculator. It doesn't require any knowledge of special functions. 38,000 times seven and a half. I've got this answer written down in my notes already. 285,000 euro. So the correct answer to the question will, of course, be answer B. 285,000 euros. However, be very careful about what the question asks you to do. In this case, we were asked for the accumulated depreciation after the second year. One of the other answers here, answer C, is also something that you may instinctively look at as being correct because 515,000, the, the answer C, is actually the assets or the machines carrying them out after those two years because with an original cost of 800,000, if you deduct accumulated depreciation of 285, you'll end up with the asset being displayed, with the asset being carried, at a net book value of 515,000. So on, on, in, it, in itself, that is also potentially a good answer, but not the answer to the question here. You were asked about accumulated depreciation, so please always read the requirements and what the question is asking you before you, um, you, know, before you provide your solution.